Hello, all my wonderful second graders. Today is Friday, May 22nd. We want to wish a happy birthday to Amiya. We have another birthday this week. Amiya's birthday is tomorrow, Saturday, May 23rd. So we hope you have a fantastic day. I so wish we could have all been together this week to celebrate all three of those birthdays. That would have been really fun, wouldn't it? But I bet you each had a wonderful day and that's what's important. On Monday, May 25th is Memorial Day. So there won't be any school that day and there won't be a video that you need to watch for that day. So that's kind of a nice way to have our weekend, right? Three days instead of just two, a nice long weekend. So for reading today, we are going to do a science spin then we're going to talk about a memory book page. And then finally, at the end, we're going to do our math. And we're going to do the math lesson all together. So you just need to do it with me, and then your math will be done. And that's even more time for you to enjoy your three-day weekend. So let's look at our matrix first. On Friday, the 22nd, it says, read the science spin magazine called The Rocket Man. Um, tell a family member what you learned after reading the magazine. And I'm going to change those directions a little bit. So hopefully you're watching the video so that you know what to do. All right, so in your folder, you should have had a science spin that looks like this, and it's called Rocket Man. All right, and we're going to kind of read that a little bit together. First, we're going to preview it just like we do in our Scholastic News. So you know that we talk about nonfiction text features whenever we have a nonfiction magazine to read. So this is your title, Rocket Man, and this is the blurb like it would be on the back of a fiction book. It says, this is Leland Melvin. He loves dogs, football, and being an astronaut. And that's a picture of him. So that's what this article is going to be about. And as we open it up, you can see the headline in blue, hardest job in the galaxy, question mark. And so that's the headline. And then there are red titles that are called what? Hopefully you know there's subheadings. Okay, so we're gonna read that. And then there are some bold face words, which are your important words. We call them vocabulary words, you know that. And as always, another text feature is picture captions. So we'll look at those. And then in this one, it has a corner bar. We talked about a sidebar before, and one time I made up the word bottom bar. This one's kind of in the corner, so we're gonna call it a corner bar. So we'll look at that as well. I'm going to try to read this with you instead of having you read it on your own. So I'm going to have to get up here and hopefully we'll be able to do this in the video camera. We'll try it and see. It might not be as easy as I think. All right, so here we go. We are going to talk about Leland Melvin and his job as an astronaut. Hardest job in the galaxy? Leland learned that being an astronaut is hard but amazing. Maybe you think your work is hard. Sure, you have spelling tests, but did you ever have to swim wearing a spacesuit or fly upside down and not puke? Yeah, that would be hard, wouldn't it? Leland has, he is an astronaut. That's a scientist who goes to space. Leland didn't know if he'd get chosen to be an astronaut. More than 2,000 people tried out for the job. Only 25 got picked. One of them was Leland. I'm not sure if you can see this or not. This is kind of hard. I'm going to turn it backwards like this so that we can see it easier. Maybe that'll help. Okay, there we go. Let's try that. Astronaut training is your next heading so, or subheading. So this part's going to be about how he had to train. Okay. The training started... Leland had to swim across a pool wearing a spacesuit and tennis shoes. He had to keep his head above water for 10 minutes, still wearing his spacesuit. He says, I think I drank about half the pool, but I passed. And what he means is, is he had a hard time keeping his head above the water with all of that stuff on, so he kept swallowing water. He had to fly in a jet called the Vomit Comet that swooped and dived and try not to puke. Leland says proudly, I didn't lose my cookies once. <laughs> that means he didn't throw up. That would have been hard, wouldn't it have? All right, I'll turn it over on this side now. Your next subheading is called the rocket launch. Leland made it through training. He was ready for his first space mission. On launch day, he put on his orange 
flight suit. Leland's parents and high school science teacher cheered as he boarded the rocket. He was allowed to take a few personal things. He took a curious George book that he had had as a kid. Well, that's cool, isn't it? Leland was, st was strapped to his seat. Then it was three, two, one, blast off. The rocket's speed pushed him back in his seat. It was hard to breathe. Then it got easier. Leland looked out the window. Behind him, Earth looked like a beautiful blue marble. All right, and your next subheading is working in space. It was time to get to work. Leland had to set up the rocket's toilet. Toilets in space are tricky. On Earth, we have gravity. It pulls us to the ground and keeps us from floating away. In space, there's less gravity. Everything floats. The toilet had a hose to collect the stinky stuff. Leland got it working. Hmm, I'm not sure that that would be something I would want to do in space. How about you? <laughs> All right, now I'm at the top of this page. Hopefully you can see it. After three days, Leland reached the International Space Station. There, he helped set up a new science lab. Leland also used a robot to help repair the outside of the space station. That job was hard. It took eight hours. When his work was done, Leland celebrated by opening a package of M&Ms. They floated. He caught them in his mouth and smiled. He had made it to space. It was hard, but it was worth it. And there's a picture caption. Leland took off in this. There's his rocket. And then over here, this picture, it says, in space, his food floated. Because there's no gravity, is there? Isn't that a cool article? Let's read the corner bar. Because this is pretty cool, too. Before he was an astronaut, Leland was a professional football player. It's hard to get picked for both jobs, but he was. These words describe football players. Check which, one, check which are true for astronauts too. Do you think they're hardworking? I do. How about skillful? It would take a lot of skill to be an astronaut and a football player, wouldn't it? Strong, for sure. And the last one, cooperative. Yep, because you'd have to work as a team member, wouldn't you? Part of a team. And this picture caption says, Leland played for the Dallas Cowboys. I bet some of you knew that just by the helmet. All right, so that's a pretty cool article, isn't it? Now, on the back, I want you to look at this. Here's another nonfiction text feature because it's called a diagram of a spacesuit. And a diagram is another nonfiction text feature. And then here are labels that tell you about his spacesuit. Okay, so I want you to read those four labels and then you're gonna answer these four questions on the back, coloring it in. You're gonna have to look over here at your labels and go back and look. Don't just take a guess, go back and look, all right? I put an activity on Seesaw for you to do. So all you have to do is uh, find that activity, click the add response, and your job is to take a picture of it so that I can see your answers, but you're also going to read on the microphone these four labels so that I can hear you reading. So that'll be something fun. Now your matrix doesn't tell you that. Your matrix just says, tell a family member what you learned after reading the magazine. You can do that too, but I also hope that you take time to do the seesaw activity so that I can hear you reading and that I can see your work, all right? Good job. So that is your reading for today, okay? And then next, we're going to talk about a memory book page. So you need this again. And we've already done two pages. So this is going to be your third page. And it looks like this. My favorites. Okay. So what you're going to do is you don't have to write in a complete sentence. Okay. All you have to do is answer it with the answer that you want. So the first one says, my favorite sport. Okay, so pick your favorite sport. You might have to have your parents or an older brother or sister help you spell, and that's fine, okay? My favorite color, then my favorite book, 
Okay, think of some books that you've read during school. It could be a library book or a book that you have at home, a book that was in your book box, a book we read at the table, maybe a book that Mrs. Lenning read to you at the story spot, okay, or even on a video. Uh, my favorite author, okay, so remember there was Junie B. Jones. Um, her author is Barbara Park. Magic Treehouse was Mary Pope Osborne. So there might be some things that you might have to Google and find the answer to that one. And if you don't know, it's okay. Just skip it and go on. Don't spend forever trying to think about it. Skip it and go on to ones that you can answer, okay? Um, now, remember, if you're going to write a book um, or a title of something, you need to have capital letters in there, all right? So my next one is my favorite food, my favorite school subject. Remember, that's reading, math, science, art, gym, music, um, spelling, handwriting, journal, whatever, okay? My favorite game. Now, in school, if you were in school, I'd say that you should just do a board game, but if you want to do a video game, that's fine. My favorite toy. My favorite place to be. Maybe it's in your bedroom. Maybe it's in your treehouse in your backyard. Maybe it's at school. Maybe it's your grandparents'. Maybe it's on your comfy couch in your family room. My favorite movie, okay? That's something that you're gonna need a title on, right? So if you pick, let's just say, I don't know, Frozen, then you need a capital F, right? My favorite television show. Again, you're gonna need capital letters because that's a title of something. My favorite song. My favorite animal. My favorite recess activity. So that could have been lots of things that you did at school. What did you use to play when you were at, re at recess? My favorite school lunch. Mm, think of that. What's a lunch that everybody liked or that you liked? My favorite season. Remember, seasons are winter, spring, summer, fall. Okay, so pick one of those four. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this all in one sitting. If you want to do part of it today and then finish it over the weekend, maybe you're bored and you want something to do, over the weekend, you can do that, but I also put a seesaw activity on there for you so that you could write your answers and take a picture and upload it so that I can see what you put. So make sure that you put the camera nice and close so that I can see your answers, all right? But if you only want to do part of it today and finish it another day, that's fine. Just make sure that you get it done eventually, okay? Because you're going to save this memory book. Remember, boys and girls, this is just a snapshot in time because when you're in fourth or fifth grade, some of these answers would be different, right? So that's the cool thing about a memory book is that you can get this out when you're in sixth or seventh grade and look back and say, oh, that's right. In second grade, my favorite movie was blah, blah, blah. And now I don't even like that movie or now it's still my favorite movie or whatever, okay? So go ahead and write this, these down, upload it to Seesaw so that I can see it. And now I would like for you to get out your math. We need lesson five. Okay, so it's pages 618 to 622 in your math packet. So get your math packet and a pencil, and I'm going to turn the camera around, and we're going to do the whole entire lesson all together. So make sure you have your pencil, and we're going to get her done. For math, we need to correct yesterday's assignment, too. We were working on quarter past the hour and quarter to the hour. So I'm just going to show you the answers pretty quickly here. So number four, 415. And this one was hard. I helped you with the seven, didn't I? And then you had to count the minutes. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So 745. Even though it looked like it was on the eight, we knew it wasn't quite eight o'clock yet. So it was still seven o'clock. And that one's tricky because it looks like it's closer to the eight, doesn't it? But it's still seven. All right, and 215. And down here, you had to draw hands on the clock and write the time. So quarter till two, quarter to two, means it's almost two o'clock and it's on the nine. It's the same as 145. Those are the same times. That's kind of hard. You might have to practice that a little bit. But quarter to two means it's 15 minutes before two o'clock. And that's the same as 145. So it's between the one and the two. So we pick the earlier number because it's technically not two o'clock yet. So it's still one something. So if you count the hands, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. And then 5, 15 is quarter past 5. And quarter past 12 is 12, 15. 
And at the bottom, you had to write the times on the digital clock, 12.45, 4.15, and 9.30. And on the back, if she has to wait three hours, what time is it now? So if you take 3.15 and you go back three hours, back one hour would be 2.15, and then another hour, 1.15, and the third hour, 12.15. So that would be 12.15. And this one was pretty easy. Circle the clock that shows 2.15, okay? And the brain builders, Aaliyah's family went hiking and they left one hour before quarter to 11. Then they drove for three hours and ate lunch for an hour. So first of all, you have to know what quarter to 11 is. And hopefully you knew that that was 10.45. 10.45 is the same as quarter to 11 because in 15 minutes, that's 11 o'clock. Then you had to go back an hour, so that was 9.45, okay? So then you started here, and I wrote start right here, so you, they started at 9.45. Then they drove three hours, so that's 10.45, 11.45, 12.45, that's right there. And then they ate for one hour, so it was 1.45 when they finished lunch. That was kind of a tricky one, wasn't it? And number 16, why is each 15 minute period on a clock called one quarter hour? Hopefully you said something about how one quarter is one part out of four equal parts. And there are four 15 minute parts in one hour. So 15 minutes equals one quarter of an hour. All right, today we get to start lesson five, telling time to the five minute. And it's page 619 and 620. And we're going to do this together. So if you need to pause the video to go get your pencil and your packet, go do that because we're going to write it right on the video. So let's get this done and you can enjoy your long weekend. All right. We have a clock right here, math in my world. Now notice when you see Mrs. Lunning's clock here, okay, my clock has these blue little marks on the outside, right? And we told you that those were, those represented the minutes, okay? And so when you see five here and 10 here, that's each little minute. So one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minute, okay? So that's why when we count and we tell the clock, we tell the time on an analog clock, we count by fives because we're counting by fives each time we come around the clock. So you're gonna notice that here we have these blue ticks and these blue numbers, but on this one, we don't, okay? So we just have to think in our head, what that would be if we did have this little clock with the red numbers and the blue numbers. But you know that not all clocks look like that. So we use these to learn. And then hopefully by now you're realizing how to do it without seeing the blue tick marks and the blue 5, 10, 15, okay? You can still do it without it though. You just have to think in your head what it would look like if you had it. So on this page, we have to count by fives as we trace the dotted lines. Label each jump, 5, 10, 15, and so on. And then draw the minute hand. Write that time on the digital clock. So here they have for you, they've kind of done little frog hops, right? Because they're starting at the 12 and they're counting each little tick until they get to this one, which is what? So one, two, three, four. You start at the 12 and you go five. So we're going to put a five here. And then 10. And then 15 and then 20, okay? And that, if we did it, we'd go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, okay? And so it's so much easier just to count by fives, okay? So we're at 20, let's keep going. 25, it's by the five. 30, is that the six? We know that, that's half past. Keep going, 35 and 40 and then stop because they want you to know that this time is something 40. Okay, so look, here's your hour hand. See how it's short? It's not touching the number, so you know it's your hour hand. It's between the five and the six. And your minute hand, they want you to put it on the eight. So we're going to draw our minute hand. We're going to touch the eight, go through the number, and then draw your arrow. Okay, so if it's between the five and the six, for your hour, you know it's five. We always pick the earlier number, so we're gonna put the hour hand right here, five, 
And then our minute hand was what? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So the time is 5, 40. Okay, now if we were in school, we would do so much practicing of telling time to the five minutes. So we're gonna do this today, but you're gonna probably need some extra practice. And that's okay, because this is something that's kind of hard for some of you. Some of you get it right away and some of you need extra practice. So take the time to practice if you need to, because it's important to know how to tell time on an analog clock. All right, on the back, guided practice. It takes five minutes, read it with me. It takes five minutes for the minute hand to move to the next number. You can skip count by fives to tell the time. And that's what we just did. And right here they showed you. you. Start at the 12 and you count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So their minute hand is on the 8 because that's 40. And their hour hand is between the 9 and the 10. Now this is a little tricky. It looks like it's closer to the 10, but it's not yet. It's between them. So you pick the earlier one. Okay. And over here it says, this clock shows blank minutes after nine. And what did it show you? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So 40 minutes after nine o'clock. Write the time another way. On your digital clock, you would say 9.40. Okay, and a helpful hint, you know that each mark on the clock face is one minute. So these little ticks right here are like the ticks that are on the blue, on the yellow clock with the blue. Do you see that? Here's those ticks, and here is these ticks. They just don't have on a no, on your paper. They don't have all these on the outside. That's what you're figuring out yourself now. All right. So in the middle, tell what time is shown. Use the clock to help, and write the time. Okay. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the hour first. So look at the hour hand. It's between the 12 and the 1, so you're going to pick the 12, right? And then you're going to count the minutes. So here we go. We're going to start at the 12, and we're going to count by fives. So you don't start counting five until you get to the 1. 5, 10, 15, 20. And so your time is 12, 20. And number two... Look, this one started here and it went all the way around. So it looks like it's four o'clock, doesn't it? Because it's pointing to the four. But guess what? It's not quite four o'clock because this has to be up here to be four o'clock. So it's still three something. Those are tricky. But that's what happens when it's almost to the next hour. Your hour hand has slowly moved to the next hour already. So we still say it's three something. So let's count. We're on the 11th. So we start at the 12. We count 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So 355. And the next one, look at your hour hand first. You know it's four. And then let's count your minutes. Start at the 12 and count 5. 10, 15, 20, 25. So 4, 25. And number four, tell what time is shown. Draw the minute hand to show the time. Okay, so what time does this say? 10, 35. And then they already have the hour for you. And notice it's 35. So that's way over here. So that's between the 10 and the 11 but we know it's still 10 something. And now we're going to figure out where 35 is to draw our minute hand. Here we say 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So our minute hand is going to touch the seven because that's 35. Okay, and explain how you skip count by fives to tell the time. You start at the 12 and you touch the one and you count five. And then every time you touch a number, you're counting by 10, aren't you? Or, sorry, you're counting by five, aren't you? That'd be bad if we counted by 10, wouldn't it? All right, so independent practice. Tell what time is shown. So here we go. All right, I like how they use this yellow part here because then you can see how it starts at the 12 and it goes all the way around until it gets to the 10. That's kind of clever. I like that. 
All right, so number five, it looks like it's on the four, but look, it's got 10 more minutes before it gets to four o'clock, so we know it's still three o'clock. And let's count by fives to get at the 10. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So we say it's 350. Number six. Okay, do the hour hand first. Look at right here. Hopefully you know that it's six something. And now let's look at the minutes. Five, 10, 15. That's quarter after six, isn't it? We just talked about that in yesterday's lesson. All right, here's one. Oh, it's on the nine. That means it's quarter to the next hour. Okay, so it looks like it's on the three, but it's not yet. It's still two something. So let's count. When it's on the nine, you should know that that's already something. I'm not going to tell you. We're going to count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So hopefully you know that the three is always 15 and the nine is 45 and the six is 30 and the 12 is o'clock. Hopefully those are pretty easy for you by now. In the middle, tell what time is shown and draw the hands to show the time. So 545. Okay, now that's almost six o'clock. So we're gonna draw our hour hand in between the five and the six, don't touch. And a 45, we just talked about up here, is on the nine. So you're gonna draw your minute hand, go through the nine. And that's 545 or quarter to six. All right, number nine, 1235. Okay, so 35 is past the six, isn't it? So we need to draw this halfway between the 12 and the one. And 35, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So our minute hand goes through the seven. And number 10, 950. Okay, so Hmm, 50, that means it's almost 10 o'clock because there's only 60 minutes in an hour, right? If we're already at 50, that means our hour hand is almost to the next hour. But we're going to put it between the 9 and the 10 because it's almost 10. Okay, and on a real clock, it would look like it probably was on the 10. And then 50, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. Look at that. And right behind each other. <laughs> All right, number 11, 220. So we know the hour is two, so halfway to there, from the dot to the number, that's where your hour hand goes. And 20, five, 10, 15, 20. Your minute hand will be on the four because that's 20 minutes after two. And number 12, 845, ooh, there's 45. You should know that that means your minute hand is on the nine. And eight o'clock, it's not gonna be right on the eight, is it? Because we know it's almost nine. So it's between the eight and the nine. And then your minute hand is right on the nine, like that. Number 13, 125. So you're gonna point to the one and 25, let's count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. So hopefully you knew that it should go to the five. Okay, now just like on your blue clock, if we had 125, it would look like this. Okay, do you see the 25 right by the five? That's how we know that the minute hand is on the five. And on the back, if the hour hand is close to the 11 and the minute hand is pointing to the 10, what time is it? Ooh, so if it's close to the 11, that doesn't mean it's 11 o'clock yet. It's still 10 something. Okay, so we're going to put a 10 here. Remember the hour hand will be in the middle of the 10 and the 11, but it isn't 11 o'clock yet. And if the minute hand is pointing to the 10, Okay, let's look at that. It's close to the 11 and the minute hand is pointing to the 10. So let's look, what would that be? Five, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. So when it's on the 10, that's 50. Do you see that right there? Okay, so it's 10, 50. Okay, number 15. A group of people get on an amusement park ride every five minutes. It is now three o'clock. There are seven groups ahead of Alyssa and her family. What time will her family go on the ride? Okay, now, they get on the ride every five minutes. It's three o'clock. You can see on the clock it says three o'clock. But there's seven groups ahead of their family. And so if they go every five minutes, we're going to have to count by five. Okay, so here's a group. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, 30, so that's one group, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, there's one more group, seven. So what is that? Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So that minute hand was going around every five minutes. Okay, I'll show you on here. Every five minutes, well, there was seven groups. Okay, so here was a group. Five, group two, 10, group three, 15, group four, 20, group five, 25, group six, 30, and group seven, 35. So she had to wait until 335 to get on the ride. 335. And your brain builder, Will gets to the theater at seven o'clock. It takes 20 minutes to get snacks and five minutes to find a seat. What time was Will ready to watch the movie? So it's seven o'clock and it took 20 minutes to get snacks. Okay, so that would be five, 10, 15, 20. So now it would be seven twenty, and it took another five minutes to get snacks. So here's five more minutes, okay? So if we had seven o'clock and it took 20 minutes, five, 10, 15, 20, it took 20 minutes to get snacks and then another five minutes to get their seat, what time does it show? Seven, and here's your blue, 25. So seven, 25. That was a brain builder because you had to do two different steps, wasn't it? All right, and the last one, what time is it when the hour hand is between the five and the six and the minute hand is on the seven? Okay, explain. So the hour hand is between the five and the six and the minute hand is on the seven. Five and six, seven. Okay, so let's count. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. And we say it's 535 because we always pick the earlier number when it's in between. Okay, so you should have write, you should write 535. Okay. So it's after five because the hour hand is between the five and six, and then I skip counted by five to find 535, because we knew it was on the seven, right there, okay? All right, boys and girls, I know this was kind of fast. If we were in school, we'd do it a lot more thorough and we'd get to practice telling time to the five minute and not a lot more, but this is the best we can do right now. So hopefully you're learning how to tell time to the five minute and you take time to practice um, some extra times. And we'll talk about some more telling time to the five minute on Tuesday. Have a fabulous long weekend and I will be back with you on Tuesday. Goodbye, second graders.